Are you ready? This might be one of my number one videos as far as performance. Uh, if you follow my channel, I do a lot of mixing and matching of different type of portable PA speakers. Uh, today I'm actually uh, mixing ho uh, home studio monitor with PA speakers, so this is gonna be interesting. So let me go through this. So on the far left, and by the way, before I even say anything else, this is not the way I would set up this system to actually run it. These speakers, the two main speakers would be about 15 feet apart. Uh, I'd be sitting back about 20 feet with a mixer. So no, this is just for demonstration purposes. And again, there'll be no sound demo today. So if you're waiting for that, don't wait too long. You're not gonna hear one, but let's start. So on the far left is the star of the show. Again, I've done a video, uh, a number of videos about this new speaker. It's the RCF TT515, and that is the top of their range. It's a portable speaker, very, very light uh, weight, about 26 pounds, I'm not sure, maybe 25. In the middle is the studio monitor I mentioned, and it's the famous JBL 308 studio monitor. Very reasonable speaker with excellent performance for its price. We'll talk about price later. And on the far right, we have, again, very pretty famous uh, in the budget world, the Yamaha BDR-10. Pulling the low end duty is also the famous Bose Sub-1. And putting it all together is a mixer that will be required and I'm using a Behringer mixer, a very reasonable mixer with excellent performance. Uh, one of the downsides of this system is this, all these spaghetti wires are required. So if you're thinking of what's available when I give you the price, uh, a column array would be very similar and you would have it very neat. The mixer is built in, you don't have all those wires but I'm gonna tell you right now, this system performance is, is unique. It's really incredible, it surprised me. So let's talk about performance. The RCF is the star of the show, as I mentioned. It's a compact speaker, but it's very powerful. It goes up to 127 dB, which is amazing for that weight. And when it does go up anywhere near over 100 dB, what makes this speaker special is it stays crystal clear, like a studio monitor. I, I've often said in my reviews that it's like a, a 127 dB studio monitor, which is just an awesome, incredible. It stays crystal clear. The JBL, now this is the speaker that is optional. There's a downside of this studio monitor when you're pairing it with PA speakers, and that is it's not gonna keep up with over 100 dB. A matter of fact, I would say about 80, 85 dB uh, you're gonna lose it. So if you're playing, if you wanna play loud, uh, you might not even need the middle speaker. It, you're gonna, the RCF is gonna over, over dominate it and it's just gonna mute it. it. You won't hear it basically. But if when you play low and you have that middle speaker in the center, it gives you that surround effect. Again, both speakers on the left and right, the mains have to be far apart. So you need a, a large listening room for this type of setup. And then the Yamaha has a diff, uh, the opposite sound signature of the RCF. The Yamaha is very smooth mid-range. It has a nice low end, but it's that mid-range, hi-fi mid-range, I'll say, that really sets it apart for, completely opposite from the RCF, where the RCF is super clean, um, high end, like I mentioned, just very, very clean, high end. If you're interested, if you're familiar with QSC, EV, JBL, all those type of speakers have that very clean high end, but RCF just takes it to the next level where it stays clean at 110, 15 dB, which is, which is kind of incredible. But when you play the Yamaha with the RCF, it's getting the boast, best of both worlds, which I've never found. I've never found any of all the speakers I purchased and I'm still on the quest to find a speaker that has the clean high end of a QSC or an RCF and the mid-range smoothness of a Yamaha. And I need to mention Bose too. Yamaha and Bose have the same exact sound signature. So you would be wasting your money to, to mix a Yamaha with a Bose system. So this the next step up from this system 
instead of the Yamaha would be the Bose Pro 8 or the Pro 16, or of course, the number one, the Pro 32. And then you're never going to get any kind of bass like a dedicated subwoofer. So even if you're going with a column array, let's look talk about the Pro 16. Um, this subwoofer, the very light subwoofer, 36 pounds, this will outperform that Pro 16 or the uh, EV30 or maybe even the, probably the EV50. There's just nothing like a dedicated subwoofer. I'm running them all from a mixer, so I have complete control. I can dial in the uh, RCF. I have that on my main out. I have the uh, JBL on an AUGS out. I have the Yamaha on an AUGS out, and I have the Bose subwoofer on an, every sub, sub one is on an AUGS out. So they're all separately controlled to dial in. Again, a lot of people don't want, don't have the patience to do it. So this is a very unique system. It's not for everybody. As a matter of fact, this, this system is probably not for 99.9% um, .9 of the people watching. But keep watching just for, the, for interest sake. Let's talk about price. Before we talk about total system cost, I did forget to mention speaker stands. So, um, you know, that's about $25 each. $75 on the speaker stands. Also, I didn't mention that, the, you know, the RCF is a super expensive professional speaker in the TT line, which is their top line. Uh, you don't actually have to go with that speaker to get similar performance. Of course, if you want the, the max performance, then you, then you spend the money and get RCF. But a, like I mentioned before, a very similar sound signature would be a QSC speaker. So I have the K8.2. So mat matching up the K8.2 with the Yamaha would, would also do the trick. Again, where the difference is you just at high, very high volume, a QSC will break up and sound harsh where the RCF, it's, it's just stays so clean. But it, there is a downside and that is it's so clean, it could damage your hearing. You don't even realize how loud it is. You know, you're playing at 110 dB and that's not healthy for you. So um, the other speakers can also be a similar sound signature. I'm thinking EV, I'm thinking JBL, any of those top speakers in those lines, they don't, nowhere near $1,900. And you can get a very similar, very clean high end, match it up with that Yamaha mid-range and you have, you have my uh, secret sauce here. On the subwoofer, you have a couple of choices. Playing loud, you do want very loud to keep up with the two tops. Then you do want a, a live sound PA sub like the sub one, which is the smallest PA sub that I would really recommend. Um, of course, if you wanna go the other route, something even larger, then you go to the sub two. That would, that would be uh, the next step up. But if you have a home subwoofer, I've tried it. I tried the uh, SVS SB2000, which is also nine hundred dollars. You don't, you wouldn't have the same volume as the sub one, but you would have a subwoofer that goes down to lower frequencies. The sub, the um, PA sub here rolls off at about forty HZ, where a home sub, a good home sub, goes down to twenty or less. So that's another option. It just makes cabling a little tricky because you, with a home sub, you have uh, RCA, uh, but it, it's done. I did it. It's just a little more uh, cabling confusion. So you can dial this system up or down to your heart's desire, but this is what I am recommending today. I think I need to give a little more explanation about that using that studio speaker, the JBL 308. Now I did mention that it gives a surround effect, which is very unique, especially using PA speakers. Again, filling a very, very large space. It just, like, like a live concert. When you go to a live concert, I'm thinking of a symphony orchestra, you have a hundred players on the stage. Well, you have sound from, I, I don't know how many feet it is across that stage, but you, you hear a sound from left to right, let's say 50 feet across. And that's like almost impossible to do in the home. So using multiple speakers gives that effect of filling in uh, a, a huge sound stage, which audiophiles tried to do with very expen expensive speakers. 
but we're t again, we're talking um, speakers that have $20,000, $30,000. So why did I pick the 308? I did try a number of different studio monitors to get this system right. The 308, even though at its super low price, which is amazing, uh, it has, it will keep up with the RCF. I, I, it's just, people were saying, oh, that's impossible. It's, it can actually keep up sound signature wise, quality, clean, clean audio uh, reproduction with a $1,900 speaker. Where it can't do, I'll emphasize again, is it can't keep up at any kind of volume compared to a PA speaker. But if you're playing below 90 dB, the, the JBL has a beautiful, clean sound signature, very, very similar to the RCF. It's really a, a match made in heaven, as they say. I tried a whole bunch of other speakers and uh, none of them can outperform this little JBL at an incredible price. I've mentioned in other videos that I am an audiophile. I do have dedicated speakers uh, that are in the audiophile world. My system is not super high end. I would say it's more to the low end of audiophile speakers and it's about total $5,000. So, but it's it's excellent system. It's good enough for me. This system will outperform that, hands down. The system is super dynamic. It can play as loud as you want. What it won't do is play low. It's not going to play low like a you know a studio monitor setup or your best audiophile speakers. Because so if that's the kind of listening, this you don't need this. This is for the people who really like to turn it up, like myself, once in a while. Watch my hearing, but uh, once in a while I want to turn it up. To, to live volume sound, you know, to try to get something to sound like there's a live band in, in the room. This is about as close as you're going to get it. And of course, audiophile systems will do that, but they're going to cost 10000 15 who knows, 20 Audiophile systems can go up to $100,000. And I would put this system up against many of those high price speakers at high volume. Again, not at, not at low volume. You're not going to get the benefit. Okay, it's price. 39 $3,970, almost $4,000. And you're getting a lot for your money. And like I mentioned, you might want to delete that middle speaker if you're not going to, if you're going to play toward the low end, you, you just won't hear the JBL. So pretty incredible. Um, I even tried putting some rear speakers. They kind of got drowned out, but that, that could be also added. A couple of small JBL 305s in the left and right rear make a complete surround system. Okay, let's go through the price. RCF, TT515, you need an adapter. It doesn't come with the adapter. You won't be able to mount it on the pole. So the speaker is 1,800, the adapter is 100. So that's $1,900. Here's the bargain, JBL308. If you get a pair of these for a college dorm room, you will have incredible sound. I wish I had this when I went to college. Anyway, $200 each, amazing. RCF. I'm sorry, uh, Yamaha, BDR, definitely a budget winner. And that's why it's been out so many years and they've never changed it. $400, only 400. Bose Sub 1, kind of pricey, but you can't beat the portability of the weight and the excellent sound. Just I just don't recommend the Sub 1 outdoors. It's not that kind of, it's not an 18 inch subwoofer for that kind of play. But for the home, wow, it really pounds, $900. I told you it's pricey. Behringer mixer, very reasonable. Only $190 on Amazon. All those cables, about $80. Added up, I hope my math was correct, $3,970. Let's round it off to $4,000. Again, in the audiophile world, you could not touch any, we are near the performance the dynamic performance at volume of this system. You just, I'm not even gonna do a sound demo because it's just, it's just too incredible. It won't show on YouTube. It's, it's kind of a waste of time. But will you, are you gonna deal with these cables in the home? Most people say, no way. Oh, my wife would kill me if I, she saw her cables across the living room. Or, but if you have a man cave, this, this could be it. But it would have to be a big one if you, if you put this in a small room, you're wasting your money. This, this has to be in a large uh, living room setup. 
I, I'm lucky to have that kind of space in my home to, to really open it up. And that's it. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. This, like I said, this might be one of my best systems. I, I call this mixing and matching. This one, this is up there with, with almost the best system. One day I'll do my ultimate system, but I, I don't know if I want to share that so soon because I, I might go into business one day. I could, I could see setting this up for people in their home. But again, how many people want mixer, mixer and wires in their home? But you need it. You cannot control these speakers. You can't dial them in without the mixer. So that's the downside. So if you want good sound, get your Bose Pro 32 and you'll have everything in one package. This is Bill. Hope you enjoyed. Later.